here's the unemployment choo-choo. Uh, we're back here, Jeff. Another week of the unemployment choo-choo. And I think this week, I, I think we found some things, and, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe you don't feel this way, that really get to the heart of what this show's about. Uh, yeah. Uh, as we were going over a couple of things, I said to myself... I said, Cells, if we were to describe show, our show, mm. these topics would probably be it. Yes. Well, and, and you know, listen, I, I think we've seen a lot lately. People saying, oh, people don't want to go back to work. People want to sit home and collect money. People are lazy. Let's take away the unemployment benefits. And I think people are, you know, I guess they're unfairly being called lazy because I know, at least for you and I, if we could go back to work yesterday, we would go back to work yesterday. Yeah. And you know what? I do think there is a, a lot of people that are very much like that. You know, everybody's got different circumstances. Uh, but if, if somebody called us, yeah, we'd be back in a second. But see, a jiffy. But, right. But 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 I think when you watch TV, you know, you see that there's, a, you know, people saying, oh, we have to take away the unemployment benefits and all that. And you know what? I, I haven't been able to explain the truth until I think I read this article that you sent me. And and realistically, this is exactly why people are having a hard time going back to work. It's not laziness, Jeff. It's it's not it's not wanting to collect free money. It is everything to do with well, number two. Yeah, and uh it has everything to do with the poop situation. Now now and, now to and, clarify, and, you're saying the poop situation at work. Correct. Okay. So when okay. you hear us say that you you, you giggle, you chuckle. Yep. Some may bellow, some may not. Right. Uh, but right. if you really deep down think about it, it kind of makes a little bit of sense. Well, and, and I think that this is important to talk about for a couple of reasons. One, because I think it is our duty as the unemployment choo-choo to set the record straight. Um, no, this has nothing to do with laziness. This has nothing to do with people who don't want to work. This has everything to do with people who, I guess, would you say, what's, is that a term poop shy? Is it poo shy? What, what is that? Is there a term for that? Is it, is it like, uh, like, you know how your bladder shy? Is it, is it, is it poop shy? Yeah, like, like, like people have pee fright. Yeah. Right? So is it like you're a little shy in the bathroom? You know, me, I'm not one of those people. I'll go in a sink, a bush, uh, you know, whatever I have to do to go porta potty. Even though one of my biggest fears is being dumped over in a porta potty, but if I had to go, I'd go. I don't care if the porta potty is at a concert, uh, a carnival, a state fair. So you'll go uh, wherever on you, you'll drop trout anytime, any place. I'll walk into a work site. And if I had to go and the other workers are there, I would go. Yeah, I don't care. Would you would you go if the door was broken? Door was open. You had to walk into the port. Door was off the hinges. Depends on the urgency of the situation. Um, Explosive diarrhea. Oh well, then look. There's uh, nothing holding me back at that point. Do you want it on your? Do you want it on your pants? And do you want to walk home with it and be embarrassed, or do you want people to see you and be embarrassed? Okay. What if it's you know, man, you had a meatloaf and gravy sandwich for lunch. You really are, you know, you're turtling. You might be able to make it. Not sure if you're able to make it, but it's fifty fifty shot. So it's like the gamble you take. So it's, I just I sat down on a on a nice hot day. Yep. And I decided to wolf down a meatloaf and gravy sandwich. <laughs> Correct. With a glass and of I milk. Made it, that I made it home. Yep. Right. Yep. I made it at home by myself. Yep. Uh, and and then I decided to bring it bring it with me. Uh, with a uh, with a glass of nice warm milk. Correct. In a thermos. <laughs> in a thermos. Yep. All right. And sat down at a park by a playground where there were a bunch of kids. <laughs> yeah. And I sat there by myself and uh, chowed down on a on a meatloaf sandwich with gravy. Meatloaf on, gravy. Uh, with, and then you open your thermos and it's room temperature whole milk. <laughs> right. It's whole milk. Okay. Uh, it, you know what? At that point, I'd probably I'd, I'd weigh my options. Okay. Uh, but I'd probably I'd probably go for it. You know? So you would. So 50-50 shot, you're still going to go for the open door. 
Well, I would say to myself, for some reason, Jeff, you you woke up today, and uh, this morning you decided when you got up in the morning to not make yourself a Thomas English muffin. Nope. But you decided to uh, bake a loaf of meat <laughs> right. in the morning. Right. Um, right. Uh, went through the whole process. <laughs> right. And Seasoned then, it. Then, yep. You see, she did the whole Shamil Shamazel did the whole deal, threw in the eggs uh, to bind it together, and then baked it in the morning, weighed it, sliced it, put it on a slice of Stroman, and then for some obscure reason, got yourself some brown gravy. <laughs> and decided to pour, to, to pour brown gravy all <laughs> over your meatloaf sandwich to take with you to sit at a park. Well, but but um, wait, you weren't you weren't even done cuz after you did that, you went up to your attic. You found a green thermos and you right. de- you decided that you would take your milk, put it in the microwave, make it room. Right. Pass, right, in there. right. And then okay. make sure it was 74 degrees and then you put it in the thermos so it maintained that 74 degrees. <laughs> Okay. So I get out there and I and I chug it to cool off. Yeah. With the whistle, I I, I say thank you, Bessie. Yes. Now for this delicious treat. And um, you and and after all that, you're turtling. You're in the middle of a park. It's fifty fifty. The restroom door is off the hinges. My question: You going in? You making it home? You're turtling. It's a fifty fifty shot. Uh, at that at that point, I I don't think that you stand much of a chance. See, I got I I'll be honest. I would I would I'd turtle home. Not, see, look, that's 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 burning building situation. You know, you're on the fifth floor. You know, you're going to break some things going down. Right. You know. Right. Right. You got to take you got to take the plunge. I don't want to be disfigured. Right. So so I don't want to burn to death. So let me if it, so let me ask you if it wasn't a meatloaf and warm milk sandwich, would you maybe try to turtle home? Well, it's hard to quantify because I've already spent the morning uh, waking up. The first thing I do when I get up is get a little Folgers in my cup and then, <laughs> right. you know, and, and then say to myself, mm, meatloaf. <laughs> right, <You know>? right, <laughs> right, right. So obviously I would have had to thaw the meat before, the night before. So this was a process that I have already thought about. Well, wait a minute. No, maybe, maybe you're getting your Folgers and you open your thing to get some milk to put in your Folgers and you see a meatloaf from the night before in the fridge, tinfoil over top of it. And you say to yourself, I could go for a meat Sammy. So, so you're not defrosting it. It's more of an impulsive meat Sammy decision. Or leftover meat. Left, I, uh, right. So I so I don't. So it's cold, but I don't go with the simple condiment of catsup. No, can, no, no, no. I you decide that I'm go, I'm going into the pantry and I'm I'm pulling out warm, thick uh, <laughs> brown gravy and I'm scooping it over top of the sandwich. So <laughs> no. the bread, the bread is so, the bread is soggy. Not only, wait a minute. You are so invested that you open up a McCormick pack that is powder. You boil oh. water. You mix the, the the boiling water with that to make boiling gravy. You then go open faced meat meatloaf sandwich, burning hot gravy onto a tin foil thing so it's open face but to lock in the heat you immediately close it so that you know that when you open that tin foil it's going to be a hot beefy open faced loafed sandwich so you gotta just say these are the thoughts of a fat right oh. like these are, this is the this is the this is the mind of a fat so when you when you think of these things you're planning these, the taste, the delicious taste of this drippy, greasy, basically, uh, you know, pile of a uh, day old meat covered in basically au jus. Right. And you're saying to yourself, <laughs> I'm really going to enjoy this somewhere where I know in case anything happens, I'm within, uh, you know, uh, shooting distance of a porta potty. Right? And so you would know that a portalette is there. Well, here's the thing. You do know it's there, but the trickery, the tomfoolery, what makes this a tough decision is that overnight some vandals have unscrewed the door. So even though you're aware of it there, you now have a doorless porta potty, you're turtling, and you have three blocks to get home, 
30 feet to get to the porta, but there is no door. So it's 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 three blocks, city blocks? I would or say, no, 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 I'll, I'll tell you what. Two suburban so, blocks and one one city avenue. So my plan the entire time was to take this walk for a nice walk. To burn some calories, so I would bur- burn four or five hundred calories on the walk up and back. It was an exercise. But within this, yeah. but within this idea of exercising, I'm deciding that at the point that when I get to you know my destination, that I'm going to ruin uh, the ca- the working out with the four thousand calorie meatloaf <laughs> ashu sandwich. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. You're looking at this wrong because see, if you are truly good at exercising you would know that a body is like a gas tank and your body needs fuel. So you've brought this sandwich in anticipation of you needing some fuel because the body doesn't work without the proper fuel. So you've brought in fuel. So no, it's not a 4,000 calorie sandwich. It's your fuel. Okay. Well, there's a leak in the fuel pump after that one. <laughs> okay. okay. And you're going right for the porta potty. <laughs> That's it. No yeah. questions asked. Okay. You got me making meatloaf sandwiches with a Jew, and I'm eating them in a park. <laughs> well, so. I don't know. I don't know where that came from. I'm not taking the sandwich to work. I'm not taking it anywhere. I decided to walk three blocks with a meatloaf sandwich. <laughs> to sit down and eat it, reason. only only the turtle. Right. Unemployment choo choo. It's the unemployment choo choo. All right, Jeff. I I believe I was selfish uh, in our latest discussion because we were supposed to be helping people, and you know we were trying to defend those those people who you know there are politicians out there and newscasters out there who are saying that people don't want to go back to work because they're lazy and and you know we kind of have our own theory it's kind of maybe about the the bathroom situation but unfortunately we kind of got sidetracked because of your need to make a meatloaf sandwich for lunch oh well yeah you had me three city blocks uh turtle heading after i decided (laughs) to have a uh i decided to make myself a sloppy au jus meatloaf sandwich open face and I also and I, and I also in this busy morning that I had you had me climbing in an attic to get a thermos to then fill it with uh, pasteurized homogenized vitamin D whole milk that's true that I was going to wash it down with in the middle of summer at a park okay okay alright you know what I maybe that was too so, specific so at the end of the day yes I'm stopping at the porter potty so, okay okay alright yeah. and, and, and fair enough but I do think for the sake of our listeners I think we should delve into the real issue here and that you know people are oh they're lazy oh they don't want to go back to work oh no but people jeff have become a custom meatloaf open face or not have become a custom to bathroom breaks within the privacy of their home and i feel like this is an underrated i guess really important aspect because we have a friend who actually put himself on FMLA because he did not want to go back to work because he got so accustomed to waking up smoking weed going to the bathroom with the door open and laying back down and answering the phones right so he's so he's on like medical leave just so he doesn't have to go back because I think that he's he has I knew this day was coming for him you did, and I, I didn't believe you. I didn't believe you called this. I thought you were wrong, but go ahead. I apologize. And I, and I told you we were heading down that track with him, you know, because you become accustomed to your restroom, right? Yeah. Look, I, I, I worked with a guy who um, lived in the next town over. I worked in Tampa. He lived in St. Pete. And he would always go home and use the restroom. Over time, for some reason, he developed this fear of going number two at work to the point where he actually moved into the same complex that I lived in because it was right up the street from work so that on his break or when he had to go, he could shoot right up the road and do the number two. And I said, I didn't see what the big deal was. It's not like the bathrooms were just a treacherous thing. And, but so you know, he, went home every, he went home every time he had to go number two. Every single time, no matter what the situation. Now, did you like? Did you happen to notice? Like, was he like a meatloaf sandwich guy? Was he a salad guy? Like, what? What was his? Uh, eat? Let me tell you, he wouldn't turn down a meatloaf sandwich. Oh, that, okay, that's for sure. 
Okay. That's for sure. Do you, now, do you think it was his shyness, or do you think he was 